very good morning to all of you watching us online this morning. Uh, if this is your first time joining us, a very good morning to all of you. We pray God's blessings and favor and strength over you as you start this day. And what better way to start the day than starting it in time of prayer and believing and trusting God for greater things to come, not just this morning, not just this week, not just this month, um, not even just this year, but for many generations to come. And so this morning, we're just going to allow a few people to still join us online. Uh, if you have the capability, just give us a good morning message, uh, give us a wave. Um, let us just, you know, unite together. Um, we are so privileged and honored to have so many people, you know, joining us this morning. And so I encourage you that if you are able to share this uh, link, share this post, share this to um, on your profile. Um, maybe even if you got the capabilities to tag a friend, a family member to join us online also. It would be an amazing time together. And I've spoken before about the power of invitation. And so let us not miss the opportunity to um, invite somebody. And it's as simple as just tagging somebody, putting their name in, um, and making sure that they are able to also join us online. Um, but yeah, this is going to be an awesome time of just bringing our prayers and petitions before God and allowing Him to minister to us. I'm just quickly going through here to see uh, who all are online so far. Uh, good morning, Terry. Good morning, Destiny. Um, good morning, VG. Good morning, Sandy. Good morning, Lorraine. Good morning, Tony. Um, good morning, Liz. Good morning, Shirley. Uh, good morning, Aneshka. Um, good morning, yeah, Taryn. Good morning, Taryn. Good morning to all of you. If I missed you so far, please forgive me. I'm just quickly going through the list here just to see who else is online and who else I need to say good morning to. Um, if you have not yet put good morning in here, that's fine. Um, but good morning to all of you. I'm just trying to go through that. Yeah, no, awesome. No, once again, good morning to all of you. I pray this will be a blessed time for all of us this morning as we prepare our hearts and our minds just to receive what God has for us. Um, I don't know, are you blessed this morning? Are you blessed? Have you had a good week? Have you had a blessed week? Maybe for some of us we had a difficult week already. I know this is only Wednesday, but maybe for some of us from Monday till this morning, we maybe had some difficult meetings, some difficult situations, some difficult things that we had to deal with and work through. And you know, we're going to be praying that God will minister to us all this morning. And may God continue to bless you as we get ready for a really awesome time. But yeah, um, I don't know if you've been watching our services. For those who have been part of our family, um, we had an incredible time of Vision Sunday, sharing what God has laid on our hearts for uh, this year. And we are now in the week of fasting also. So if you are watching online um, and you are fasting with us as a family, may God strengthen you even in this time of fasting. May he continue to, to bless you and strengthen you in a time of fasting. And we just want God to just continue to minister to all of you as you continue just to receive what God has for you. And we just want God to just continue to speak to us more clearly, more audibly, as he continues just to you know, minister to all of us, even in our time of fasting. And I want to share with you um, just this morning, just a short thing on, on you know, the whole thing about the incredible power of fasting and prayer. And so um, if you go with me in the Bible to Mark 9, there's this incredible, incredible story in Mark 9 that speaks about this uh, father that has this young boy that has an evil spirit within him. And this, 
there's this commotion that's happening within the city and that the people are just, you know, surrounded by all these things that's happening and they just, there's this commotion that's just causing a whole lot of disruptions and the people are just, you know, looking for a solution and I explain why the people are looking for a solution, especially the dad in this story. Because eventually Jesus steps into the scene because he then sees the commotion that's happening and he's confused about why is there so much commotion. And so what happens is that Jesus then comes closer and he's asking the crowd, okay, well, what's going on here? And the dad steps forward and he says, I've brought my young boy to your disciples, you know, to cast this demon out. And they prayed for him, but still nothing changed. The situation didn't change. The demon is still inside. This evil spirit is still inside my boy. And this situation has not changed even when your disciples prayed. And so Jesus goes, you know, on and he actually calls the boy forward and he actually then commands the evil spirit to come out of the boy. And the evil spirit then is you know, removed out of the boy. And the crowd even sees when they see the boy, because the boy is just lying almost like seemingly dead after the evil spirit has left him, and they take it as that the boy is dead. But the scripture speaks about Jesus, you know, extends the hand, and he then lifts the boy up, and the boy is alive, and there's no evil spirit in him. And the crowd is amazed, everybody is amazed, and Obviously, the disciples are a bit perplexed as to the whole situation and what just, you know, was unpacked in front of them. And so, privately, privately, they came to Jesus after this and they said to him, but, you know, why couldn't we cast this evil spirit out? And that is where I want to take this from, because then Jesus, in Mark 9, 28 and 29, Jesus then gives them the understanding of prayer and fasting and the importance and the, the incredible power of prayer and fasting because he says, and when he had entered the house, his disciples asked him privately, why we not can cast out this evil spirit? And he said to them, this kind cannot be driven out by anything but by prayer and fasting. Now, some translations in your Bible, when you read Mark 9.29, might just say, this kind can be cast out only by prayer. But if you take your footnotes and you go look at your footnotes, it will actually say that some translations actually say prayer and fasting. Because here's the thing. God doesn't need anything from us to move in the world. God can do anything, and I think that is the, the, the foundation that we have to set on, that God doesn't need anything from us. He can do all things. He can do anything that He pleases and wills to do. But for some reason, some incredible and grateful reason, some beautiful, beautiful reason, God chooses to invite us to partner with Him. And that's the incredible thing about the God that we serve. He doesn't need us to do anything but He wants us to partner with Him. And He invites us to partner with Him. He calls us to pray and fast. And He moves on our behalf. Not just that we, you know, feel differently and see differently, but also that it increases our faith when we fast and we pray. Because that's ultimately what Jesus was trying to explain to the disciples as to why they couldn't cast out this demon, this evil spirit. It's because they, they, they didn't necessarily didn't pray properly. They didn't you know, understand the principle of prayer. But I believe within me that there was a principle that they missed out on, that prayer and fasting goes hand in hand. And it was in that incident that they missed out on understanding that they had to have a hunger to see something change. And I believe that in our time, in our prayer, and our fasting, That we have to have a hunger for the presence of God. Not a hunger for food. Not a hunger for chocolates. Not a hunger for, for, for coffee and all of those things. But when we pray and fast, that we have a hunger for Jesus. 
Because ultimately when we pray and we fast, we have to have a hunger for His presence. To know that in those times in our prayer and fasting, that we receive what God has for us. In essence, it's almost in a sense that when we pray and fast, that we hit the reset button. To hit the reset button, to say, Jesus, I need you right now. Jesus, there's so much noise, so much things happening that I need almost in a sense to hit the reset button. In our prayer and fasting, to hit the reset button and say, Lord, I need you right now. I need you to come into my situation. I need you to come into my struggle. I need you to come into my family, my business, my workplace, my school. This thing that I'm really struggling with. This thing that I'm tempted to, to do that I know is not good for me. But it just feels like I'm drawing closer and closer to that temptation and further and further away from you. And that's at that moment that we need to hit the reset button of prayer and fasting. You see, prayer and fasting moves you from a physical emptiness to a spiritual fullness. I want to say this again because I feel this is important for us to understand. Prayer and fasting moves you from a physical emptiness to a spiritual fullness. Yes, we might feel empty because now in this essence, we're not, you know, we, we, we're not eating certain foods, we're not eating at certain times because we're fasting. But it's not because we're going on a hunger strike and get this. Because fasting is not for us to go on a hunger strike. It is for us to, in essence, to use the time in order for our God to fill us up anew, to fill us up afresh, and so that we can get spiritually full. Because I believe in that time, because the Bible isn't clear there in that story that I just read out for us in Mark 9. In that, in that instance about seeing Jesus fasting. It doesn't speak that Jesus wasn't fasting, you know, a certain meat or he wasn't fasting this or that. It doesn't say that. But I believe within this context, if you read it and understand it, there was often times that Jesus was going to a quiet place. A time where he was alone and he was praying. But I believe within me that, and this is the inst where we have to understand the importance of hand in hand, working together with prayer and fasting. Because I believe that, that, that in that time, and it's, the Bible is very clear on this, that Jesus even fasted. And he will not tell the disciples about one principle about prayer and fasting if he hasn't done it himself. And so I would encourage you, that don't just take this for granted. Don't just take this as something that, okay, well, I'm just fasting, and, and then it's just like taking, you know, you know, not taking intake of certain food items or eating at certain times. But they don't actually then also spend time in allowing God to speak to you. And I know for some of us, it's difficult, especially if you're going through a difficult season and a difficult time. And experiencing just this difficult, this hardship. And the last thing you want to do is to pray and fast. The last thing you want to do is to, 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 to not eat or not to, 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 you know, to, to, to do a certain thing. Because the reality of it all is that you really just want to escape. And, and some of us, our escape, and I want to say this, please hear me. I've seen it many times. Our escape sometimes is to do those things, to eat more, and to eat more chocolates, more sweets, because that's, for some of us, that's our trigger, that is our, our release, to feel good. But I believe in a time of difficulty, in a time of really going through a, a, a tough time, it is not to grab onto those things, but it's to grab onto Jesus. And the way to hit the reset button, as I said, is a time of praying and saying, Lord, this is my time of praying, my time of speaking to you, engaging with you, communicating with you, chatting with you. But in the time of also communicating with God, interceding, bringing our petitions to God, it is also to say, but all of those distractions, all of those things that's keeping me away, that's causing me not to actually fully engage with you, I will sacrifice that. I will let go of that in order to have a perfect time, a time of just being with you. 
And God will honor that. Hear me on this. When the greatness of the problems in the world overwhelms us, when you see the brokenness of the world around you, let the urgency lead you to a desperation to move to God. Not a desperation to move to other things of this world, but a desperation to move towards God. Let it lead you to seek Him and even in a greater way than before. You know, on Sunday we unpacked the vision for 2024 for Sweetwater's Church and we spoke about the word greater. And I believe this is going to be a year of greater. And I don't know what you're asking God for, but pray for a greater impartation, a greater love, a greater anointing, just for God to move greater in your life, in your family, in your business, in your workspace, in your school, in your community. And I believe this is a year of greater. Greater exploits, greater things to come from God, greater works from our side. But I believe that as we move into a time of prayer and fasting, as we trust and believe that God can move mightily in our lives, as we press the reset button and say, God, I need you. There has been so many distractions, so many things is pointing me to other directions. But in this moment, in this time, I want you to move mightily in my life. And thank you, Jesus, for all you do. See, Paul had a hunger for Jesus. Paul said in Philippians 3.8, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Jesus, my Lord. I consider everything a loss. Everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. You see, when you make Jesus your, your Lord and your Savior, if you decide to say, Jesus, you are in control. I love you more than anything else. All of these other things will be of less. So this morning, let us have a hunger for Jesus. Let us have a hunger to experience God more and more in our lives in greater measure. And this morning, I want to pray for each and every one of us, whether you are currently fasting, whether you are, you know, whether you fasting food, or you fasting, you know, social media, or you fasting, whatever it is. Maybe you are struggling to just comprehend and understand the whole concept and principle of fasting. And maybe you, you can't fast because of a health condition. And this is not a judgment. This, I don't want you to feel that because you are not fasting that you are even lesser than a Christian. Come, we are not going into that does not make you less of a Christian. doesn't make you less of somebody that Jesus loves. Believe me. Jesus knows your heart. And I want you to just be encouraged, be strengthened by the understanding that when we allow God to move in us, that His Spirit moves freely and powerfully within each and every one of you, that whatever you have been hoping and praying for, Whatever you are saying, God, I need you to move in my life. Let God speak to you in your time of prayer and fasting. Let Him allow you to, to let, 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 let's allow Him to speak to us in such a powerful way. Can I tell you, in our time of prayer and fasting, it is those times, and hear me, it is in those times that we hear God actually clearer. Because there's no more distractions there's no more things that is actually pulling us away that takes our time away from God. And that is what's so powerful about prayer and fasting. And if that's you, that maybe you are in a week or a month or a year of making some very, very important decisions. Maybe you're in a juncture of whether to go to the left or the right, whether it's a business decision, whether it's about your family, Whatever that is, if it's a very important decision, would you consider before you make any decision 
to bring it before the Lord in time of prayer and fasting. Because we read throughout Scripture that before any difficult or you know, important decision that needed to be made, people came in a time of prayer and fasting. So Heavenly Father and Almighty God and King, we come before you, Lord God, and we come before you in our time of prayer and our time of fasting, Lord God. And Lord, we pray, Lord God, for renewed strength. We pray, Lord God, for those who are fasting this morning, Lord God, for those who entered into a time of fasting, whether it is a Daniel fast, whether it's a 21-day fast, whether it is a Jews fast, whether it's just a complete, just a water fast, whether it is just, you know, whatever fast it is that they are engaging with. I pray, Lord God, that you would just continue to strengthen their bodies, strengthen their mind, Lord God. Lord, we pray, Lord God, in this time that we would just press the reset button, Lord God, to know, that, Lord, that you are in control. And Lord, whatever situations we might be facing, whatever difficult decisions we need to make, Lord God, let us do it in a time of prayer and fasting, believing and trusting in our Lord and Savior, that you are all-powerful, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, for the evidence is found in the story like this, found in Mark 9, Lord God, where, Lord, where we sometimes feel, Lord God, incomplete, where we feel, Lord God, that we don't have the the, the right ways, the, the, the enough power, so to say. But I thank you, Lord God, that, Lord, as you've been an example and a good teacher to your disciples, you're a good teacher and a shepherd to each and every one of us to help us to understand the importance of prayer and fasting, Lord God. And I pray, Lord God, Lord, that in this time, that this, this season of prayer and fasting, that we would understand the incredible power that comes through prayer and fasting as it would allow us to get spiritually fueled up. And I pray, Lord God, that as we get fueled up in our time of prayer and fasting, Lord, that we would just be able to go into various areas, various places, various situations, where we lay hands on people, Lord God, that we would see the captives being released. We would see those who are sick in body, Lord God, to be healed in Jesus' name. That we would see those who are broken and hurt, that they will be, be able to come to a place of healing and restoration. That you would just continue to restore them unto you, Lord God. And I pray, Lord God, that those who are just struggling, Lord God, whether it is financial need, Lord God, we bring before you each and every person that says, Lord, I need a breakthrough in my finances. Lord, for those who are saying, Lord, I struggle, Lord God, because I need a vehicle to get to work, Lord God. I need a vehicle because I need this job, Lord God. I need a vehicle to just get my kids to school, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, for those who are saying, Lord God, I need this, Lord God. I need just transportation, Lord God. I need a way to get from point A to point B, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, Lord, that you would move mightily, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that you are a God of the impossible, Lord God. For those who are saying, Lord God, I've been going from interview to interview, Lord God. I've been putting my CV to this place and that place. And I've just been, been just receiving negative news of the negative news, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, this will be the season, Lord God, that, Lord, that they would receive good news, Lord God. They would receive the favor of God, Lord God, the breakthrough, Lord God, because of your faithfulness, Lord God, because of their faithfulness, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, Lord, that you are faithful, Lord God. Even when we are struggling, Lord God, when we lose hope, Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, Lord, that you would continue to move mightily, Lord God. And I pray, Lord God, in this time, Lord God, that you would just continue, even as you held your hand out, to lift the young boy up, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, for those who feel dead in their situation, for those who feel dead in their situation, Lord God. Right now, even when a crowd is looking to them and saying, this is a dead situation, this is a dead thing that's happening right now, I pray, Lord God, Lord, that they would just know, Lord God, that they would see you in this situation, that you would lift them up, Lord God, by your mighty hand, Lord God, that you would lift them up in this situation, that they would come to life, Lord God. We believe and we receive, Lord God, for you are a resurrecting God, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, just as your son has resurrected out of the dead, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, for every dead situation, every 
every dead thing that has been happening in their lives, Lord God. Right now, we thank you, Lord God, for the resurrecting of your servants, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for resurrecting situations, Lord God. Dead hopes, dead dreams, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, somebody, come join me in this. Pray with me. Unite with me. Resurrecting is about to happen. Resurrection into situations. Dead dreams are about to come to life. Dead hopes are about to come to life. We thank you, Lord God. We will see testimony of the testimony of the testimony coming to life because we serve the living God. The living God in me, in you. We don't serve a dead God. We don't serve a dead Jesus. We serve a living God in each and every one of us. And this morning, we come to you, Lord Jesus. And we thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that you are alive in our situations. And we pray, Lord God, Lord, this morning, Lord God, every dead situation, every dead problem, everything that might have seemingly looked dead, come to life in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord God. We thank you that we have the authority. We have the power. Because we have you living in each and every one of us. And I pray this morning for each and every one that's watching this morning. Hear me now. If you have a dead situation, a dead dream, a dead hope, maybe somebody said this is impossible. This will never come to where you need it to be. Maybe you've been praying, maybe you've been seeking for many years. And it just feels it's a dead, dead situation. Right now, come before the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for those who are watching online this morning, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, Lord, that right now, right now, wherever they are, whether they're in their house, whether they're in their car, whether they're in their workplace, wherever they find themselves right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, you know all those dead situations. You know those impossible situations. And right now we come before you and we thank you, Lord God, you are moving mightily in those situations. And I pray, Lord God, Lord, for those who are seeking health, for those who are seeking a breakthrough in their health situation, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, will you come through, Lord God? Will you bring your restoration and your healing power upon your children? In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, for each and every family, Lord God, each and every mother and father, Lord God. Because I think of this father that brought his young boy in a desperate situation. And I pray, Lord God, for each and every dad and every mom, Lord God. They are desperate for their children. I pray, Lord God, Lord, would you just continue to move mightily in them. Lord, as they are the pillars in their family, Lord God, will you just continue to strengthen them and watch over them, lead them, and guide them. We thank you, Lord God, Lord, as they are continue to be the authority in the house, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that they would just receive from you, that you would, in essence, download, Lord God, Impart on them, Lord God. Let them speak with the authority that you give them to lead their families, Lord God. We are seeking spiritual fathers, Lord God. And I pray, Lord God, that you would just continue to lead them in Jesus' mighty name. Continue just to guide them, protect them, and watch over them. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for all you do and continue to do. Will you just continue to, in this week, Lord God, as we continue our fasting, Lord God, where it is a time where we feel like we want to give up, Lord, will you just speak to us to not give up and allow us just to hear you more clearer and more audibly. We thank you for all you do and continue to do in the lives of your children. We praise you. 
we worship you and we adore you. The King of kings and the Lord of lords. There is none like you. There is none like you. Who can ever compare to your greatness? Who can ever measure up to you, Lord God? We thank you for who you are and who we are in you. Lead us in the mighty name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen and amen. Thank you so much, family. I pray that you were blessed this morning, that God mightily moved into your situation in your life. and Whatever you've been praying for, that God will continue to speak to you in that need, in that situation. Don't neglect the meeting together of God's saints, of God's people. Join us on Sunday morning. Join us if you need more information about joining into a life group. Speak to one of our staff. Get hold of the office. Get plugged into a community of believers. We love you and appreciate you. And may God just continue to pour the best of him into you. God bless you, family. See you soon. Bye for now.